Okay. Welcome to GUI and in web browsers for 8th of September 2020. This week, uh, we got a pretty cool announcement. So maybe I'll show you my screen. Feel free to add uh, any agenda, agenda items which I missed. Um, the cool, uh, cool development is that uh, uh, part of uh, work we do with Igalia on uh, improving the way protocol handlers um, work on the web platform. Uh, initially, the goal was to improve browser extension context, but uh, since then the work pivoted a little bit and we are improving the way the generic uh, um, navigator uh, API looks like. Uh, so in Chrome 86, uh, which uh, shipped uh, on the 3rd of September, um, there's this uh, update that IPFS, IPNS, and a bunch of other uh, distributed web uh, uh, URI schemes uh, are now safe listed, uh, which means uh, everyone can use, use them in, um, re with registered protocol handler API. It's a basic API which just enable you to uh, redirect specific requests to some uh, arbitrary website. Uh, but it's uh, pretty cool that we are now safe listed. Uh, safe listing means uh, our protocol scheme does not need to be prefixed by web plus uh, prefix. Uh, so you know, are, it's much easier to use IPFS console slash protocols uh, uh, in, uh, in websites and uh, in general, um, across your system. Um, that's the first step. Uh, ideally, we want to get to the point where we are able to return arbitrary bytes fetched from IPFS without redirecting to some other URL. Um, but it's pretty cool that uh, registration at IANA and now uh, we can see it happened some time ago and now uh, Chrome 86 uh, safe listed. Uh, um, IPFS, IPNS, uh, which will make uh, all make make it uh, to all the other Chromium-based uh, browser vendors uh, sooner or later. Um, as a side note, we got this uh, website. Are we distributed yet? Dot com. Uh, it was mentioned on the Chrome uh, Chromium team blog post. Unfortunately. Uh, it, that website is a bit outdated and uh, the deployment does not work. So my proposal was to uh, switch to Flick so we don't uh, need to figure it out how to do uh, Circle CI uh, uh, de based deployments uh, across the orgs because this website is under are we distributed yet org and there's a, uh, a bunch of uh, stuff that does not work across orgs uh, but that's something we probably will discuss uh, async uh, outside of this call. Um, there are upcoming releases. I tried to like, compile a list of stuff that uh, will land sooner or later. Uh, we did not ship uh, IPFS web UI to 11 yet, uh, but there's a milestone which is nearly completed. We got just uh, two or three uh, issues or pull requests awaiting for a review and merge, and then we are good to go to to do it, uh, the plan is to do it either tomorrow or Thursday, depending how profile feels uh, and uh, our reviews goes. Uh, but it, this will be a pretty cool um, release where uh, changes made by Iraqli on uh, removing the need for removing the buffering of big files um, that will land, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, breadcrumbs, uh, breadcrumbs uh, by Rafael. Uh, improved support for remote APIs, so it will be possible to uh, use uh, things like basic auth or a custom uh, configuration of HTTP client. Uh, yeah, and a, a, a bunch of uh, improvements around uh, the way we handle translations, uh, the duplication of the call, uh, of uh, keys made by Jessica. And there's like a long, long list uh, on the milestone, I believe. Um, 
I don't think I'm sharing my screen, <laughs> uh, but uh, the link is in the notes. <laughs> we're at we're at two issues open, fifteen issues closed. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot so of stuff that didn't that doesn't that isn't user visible, but is still super good. Yeah, I think we should aim for like a smaller milestones. Uh, we already scoped a bunch of stuff to uh, to twelve, uh, and and we we'll probably refine this process. Uh, uh, the, this when this release happens, we will uh, ship new IPFS desktop. Uh, I believe uh, Go IPFS 0.7 will be released probably next week, at the beginning of the next week or at the end of this week. Um, so when we have this new web UI, we will bump the version of both web UI and Go IPFS in IPFS desktop and ship that to our end users. Uh, so all those new web UI features will uh, land in IPFS desktop and IPFS companion uh, with post sekio uh, refactor uh, got kind of deprioritized de because uh, w our infrastructure will still maintain uh, those uh, bootstrap nodes which talk only with uh, which will enable uh, JS IPFS running in the browser context uh, JS IPFS in an older version which does not uh, support anything other than Sekio, those nodes will continue working properly. So it's no longer a super high priority to land this uh, so, uh, that soon. Uh, good news is that uh, Alex landed, uh, uh, I, I mentioned it uh, a little bit lower. So there's this uh, JavaScript epic of replacing node buffers with uh, uh, uint uh, arrays and uh, the good news is that I believe the latest version of JS IPFS is mostly unifying uh, uh, the behavior between uh, JS IPFS and uh, uh, JS IPFS HTTP client. So the same uh, types are accepted in both, which will make uh, a refactor of IPFS companion easier. Because in IPFS Companion, we have both HTTP client for talking to a remote node uh, over HTTP, and there's also ability to uh, run embedded node. Uh, and so far, we had to uh, create a two code paths for each, and now it will be greatly unified. So I think that will unblock uh, this refactor as well. Um, oh, gosh. I believe that's it uh, on, on, on upcoming releases. Did I miss anything? Um, IPFS uh, go IP, uh, Jessica updated uh, names of bunch of countries, which were... <laughs> and then that opened up the biggest rabbit hole on the planet. It was like all, all over the place, but... Uh, yeah, uh, that will also be in uh, Web UI 2.11. Uh, uh, so it's pretty fat release. We'll try to uh, cut a bit more lean releases going for, for, further in the future. And am I right? You can see, you can see the uh, country edits already in the public gateway tracker. Those are already oh, yeah. in the real world. Uh, public. Yeah, so I, I believe I switched uh, this static website. Uh, it's, it's using Go, uh, IPFS uh, Go IP, and it's using the pre-built browser bundle. Uh, oh. Pre-built HTTP client, which is pretty funny. So if you hover on uh, the flag of the USA, in the past it was United States, now it, it, it's USA. That's how we know it, the name updates got applied. Uh, yep. It works. <laughs> All right. Um, pinning services. Gosh. Oh, every why every item is mine. <laughs> I should yeah. randomize this stuff. <laughs> All right. So, uh, pinning services API spec. The good news is that there are no new, no news. So that's a good news. <laughs> Uh, it's good news because uh, we are pretty stable and pretty happy with the API. Uh, the, there is just a bunch of final touch, uh, touches on, um, on the topic of uh, documentation. So we are specifying that the pin name filter should be case insensitive uh, to improve user experience. And we are uh, 
clarifying the way browser, uh, the way error responses should be returned. So I believe right now it looks more or less like this. Uh, there are examples for each error type. We also got uh, a generic uh, 400 error and 500 uh, custom errors. Uh, we do not control every error that will be returned by uh, like reverse proxies and also pinning services may decide to create uh, their own custom error codes. Uh, but there's a, an error uh, structure that we suggest to use, which makes it easier for both machines, humans, um, and make it possible to figure out what went wrong without relying on uh, HTTP semantics. So uh, that's mostly uh, improving docs and clarifying stuff that was not uh, specified in the spec. Um, I also believe we now have um, a Go uh, library for uh, client side, and Andrew uh, made uh, pins on Rails. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it la the last time we, we talked. So pins on Rails are uh, server implementation of pinning service API uh, that you can like run locally or run remotely and use it for self-hosting and stuff like that. Um, Yep, I believe that's my list of stuff I was supposed to run through very quick. Uh, yeah, so uh, the, the, the links to uh, both client and uh, Andrew's uh, pinning service uh, uh, app uh, will be added to the readme of pinning service API spec, I believe there's an open PR. Oh, uh, quick note, Andrew just said he moved it into Shipyard, so we'll need to change it in the API docs. I think he's already changed it. Oh, you did? The PR is up to date. Um, uh, that's what I get for being gone for a day. Question, Lido, about um, Filecoin and pinning things. Are we assuming that the Filecoin stuff will be transparent to the user or dealt out of band? Like, is that something yeah. that... Yeah, the so, uh, spec or is something that will get flung? Uh, so outside? it was like a con conscious decision to not include anything file coins related in the spec. Um, so it's purely IPFS. Uh, there's, uh, you, you can uh, implement it with <laughs> SQL database, whatever you want as a backend. Uh, you may use uh, whatever you want for the storage. The idea is that it should be possible to use this API in a pinning service that is Filecoin backed. And it should be possible for pinning service to come up with uh, additional um, uh, metadata uh, for that's related to Filecoin. For example, if you want to store multiple copies or you want to store it in a specific uh, regions or uh, tweak other Falcon uh, parameters. Uh, the pinning service that is implementing this API spec should be able to leverage info and meta fields, which are like free form uh, dictionaries right now, and come up with uh, a convention for uh, supporting this additional Falcon specific or uh, way of uh, storing files. Uh, but we did not uh, we did not include that in the spec, just to make a spec small and like backend agnostic. And also, we did not had um, many uh, pin. We had a small number. We have a small number of pinning services which will implement this spec uh, out of the box. Uh, so we don't want to be prescri uh, prescriptive too early. And the idea is that pinning services that are using Filecoin on the backend, then they will eventually come up with a set of conventions which are common to them. And we either agree or like everyone will follow the same set of conventions or we will promote uh, those meta or info fields to the higher level, just like we did with creation date or a name of a pin. But that's just like uh, the where things are right now. The spec is just IPFS uh, and that's it. 
that makes sense. Uh, I thought the spec on the whole was very easy to implement. There's a few bits that you have to make sure you focus if you're if you're implementing it like I did by hand rather than using the, like something that generates something else from the YAML file. But um, the only thing that I found that was weird that's still there um, is when you do an update, you're not actually doing an update. You're deleting the thing and returning a brand new thing, um, which hurt my brain a little bit to like do that. I, I kind of re-implemented it three times until I ended up with like, okay, fine. I'm going to forget what I know and I'm just going to do exactly what this says. Um, but that might end up being a gotcha for some other people as well. Uh, maybe it's just the messaging around it to be like, it's not really an update at all. You don't touch, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you don't yeah. change any details in your, whatever your record for your pin is, blast, throw it away and make a new one with the details that were sent through. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a good point that maybe we, we should like use different language than modify or update. Maybe we should use something like migrate migrate or, or something replace yeah or replace yeah i think maybe replace may be better uh the the, the this... also it uses a post so it doesn't match with like the kind of patchy yeah semantics yeah. of rest uh, both post and this uh concern about like get uh, posting something and getting something new is because uh, the general idea behind this api is that the pin object is immutable so you effectively can think that you, if you use IPFS for storing those pins, right? So you have this pin object and you put it on the IPFS and you get an immutable CID. And then you can use that uh, immutable CID as an ID of ID in a pin status, right? right? And that's, if you think about things uh, that way, that explains why you are not able to like actually update the pin when you post a pin to replace it. Uh, you posted a new thing. That new thing got added to IPFS, and you got a different unique identifier, and that's why you got this different identifier back. Um, yeah, and I probably ran into that because I kept my pin status and pins in the same table as as opposed to making two different ones. Um, mm -hmm just for simplicity. I've yeah. got to run ping. now, um, but if there's more opportunity to talk about those things, then ping me for whatever the yeah. relevant meeting is. Yeah, I think this, it's a pre pretty good idea to change the naming to replace. I really like, I think that will make it easier for people to wrap their hand, uh, head around, even without knowing this uh, story about storing pin objects on IPFS itself. Bye, Andrew. All right, folks, um, I'm at the end of agenda. Uh, we are a bit short stuffed this week. Is there anything you want to discuss, talk about it? Can I check in with you after you stop recording for details of things that no one else cares about? You mean our top secret projects, which are- Oh, yes, our, our moon base underground volcano lair. <laughs> Great, now I need to cut this out of this recording. Okay, um, <laughs> see you in two weeks. Hopefully we'll finally re release WebUI by then. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.